Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you can be here with me today. Um, today is something that I've been wanting to share with everyone for a while. And I think that it's going to be a blessing for so many. I think so many parents are maybe also experiencing similar situations. So I hope this is a blessing to you. I decided to break it down into uh, two parts. So this will be part one. And I titled it uh, A Mother's Journey, My Story. I also, for those of you who know, I do have a blog as well. So I have it in my blog at brendasweetescape.com if you would like to read it. Um, but, as you know, I also am putting it here in my YouTube channel. And at the same time, I'm also putting it in my podcast for those who prefer just to listen to it. So I hope that this will be a blessing to you. I really do believe that our story, um, our experiences, life experiences, life struggles, life challenges are also a blessing for many others who may feel that they are not able to overcome and face these challenges um, that come to us, you know, as part of life. Um, unfortunately, some of us may have it, you know, worse than others. But I always say whenever I'm going through anything in life, I always say, you know what, it could be worse. Um, you know, so my family went through, we went through a very difficult time. Um, a couple of years ago, um, or I should say about a year ago, it was really hard. And for me, I felt like it was important for me to just focus on my family. Um, I literally stopped doing my blogs. I stopped doing my YouTube channels, my podcasts. And even on Facebook, I would put little posts here and there, but rarely not that much because I felt like it was very important that I had to really focus on my home, on my children. And as most of you know, you know, we, we are a Christian home. Therefore, our faith in the Lord, our faith in Jesus gave us the strength and the courage. Um, and it helped us during these very difficult and delicate times. Um, you know, perhaps many people that are Christians believe uh, or many Christian families um, may be going through something very similar. Um, and a lot of people believe that because you're a Christian or you're a Christian family that you are not a, you will not experience this. What I'm going to about to share with you, and um, the truth is, yes. A lot of families go through this. They are experiencing it. And the problem is that they're afraid to share or to let anyone know or to seek help. That is why I felt like sharing my experience with you and what we went through. Um, you know, today, many of our, our youth um, are facing same similar struggles that my son went through. And sadly, uh, many parents fail to see these signs. Um, and they do not realize there is a problem. Um, one thing I do know with certainty is that we cannot ignore it, no matter what. It is time that we, as parents, as a family, um, that we discuss this. And not only discuss it, but we also act on it and help our youth, help our teens. Um, because, uh, you know, so many times we fail to see the signs and uh, it's important that we open our eyes our hearts, our minds to this. And we, we, we have to realize that we as parents have to stand together and we have to be willing to help our teens. Um, you know, we have to be able to um, address it together, okay? As a family, we need to educate ourselves and we need to seek help. There are so many resources out there. Um, it is crucial that families come together to discuss depression, to discuss suicide in our kids. It's a very delicate topic that a lot of people choose to ignore, but it's a topic 
that um, instead of ignoring it or avoiding it, on the contrary, we must discuss it. Um, it is very important that we allow our children to openly share their feelings with us. Uh, you know, and most importantly, we must learn to listen. So many times, you know, I think uh, our society is lacking on that. Um, you know, many teens do not have that confidence or do, do not feel that they're able to openly discuss their fears or concerns with their parents. And I think that as parents, we have to be willing to change and listen to allow our kids to express themselves uh, simply because we did not think a certain way when we were, when we were their age doesn't mean that our teens are not allowed to think that way. Just because we did not struggle the way they are struggling or we did not face depression or anxiety when we were their age does not mean that we have to put it aside and we have to shut our ears and not listen to them. I think it's very, very important that we um, develop that open communication as opposed to they're going to their friends and they may be receiving different type of support, a negative support, you know. So uh, for me, my family comes first. And um, I would say I, I do not worry about what pe I don't worry about what people are going to say. I don't worry about what people are going to think. That is the last uh, of my problems or concerns. Um, because I always say people will always talk no matter what. But it's time for us to take a step and, and step up for our children who are really calling out for help, who are crying out for help silently. Um, and it's time for us to, to stand up for our kids, stand with us, you know. Um, because it is during these times we must come together. Uh, and bring hope, uh, love, and compassion for all who feel there's no hope and feel that life is not worth living anymore. I think it's it breaks my heart when someone tells me that they don't want to live anymore and they start saying, for what? I have no reason to live anymore. And it's time for us to stand up and show them that there is hope. You know, um, God wants us to, to, to love unconditionally, regardless, regardless what they're going through. You know, we have to learn to see people as God sees us and how God sees people. You know, I always tell the Lord, please help me to see people as you see me, as you see others. So with this, I decided to share my story because I am sure that many parents and families may also be experiencing similar situations. Um, as I have shared before, you know, I've always had passion to help families and help teens uh, who may be suffering from anxiety, depression, or even um, suicide. But never did I imagine that I would be helping my own son facing these struggles. Um, but however, I strongly believe that nothing is a coincidence in life. And that everything we learn, everything that we experience, everything that we feel is for a purpose. Perhaps we're not able to see it at that moment, but down, down along the road, we're able to see the whole picture and then we understand. So a couple of years ago, our son shared with me that uh, he was feeling very, very anxious. And um, it was very concerning to me. So I didn't even think twice. The next day, I literally the next day, I, I took him to the doctor. And um, they did an evaluation on him, 
And after the evaluation, he was found to be severely depressed. And he was referred to a therapist. Uh, however, after a few sessions, the therapist uh, recommended that he took, take medication for his anxiety. Uh, for us, it was very, very hard because we were like, what can we do? You know, it was so hard. Um, as a parent, you feel so helpless. But we just, we needed to get him help. We needed him to, to start, we wanted him to start feeling better. So he continued to see his therapist once a week. And in 2022, uh, my family experienced something that we never imagined we would ever have to face. Um, I've always tried to have open communication with my children. Um, and as a woman, we play different roles in life. For me, one of the most important um, gifts is of being a mother. Uh, my children mean the world to me. You know, I, I tell them this all the time as well. Um, what hurt me the most was that I failed to see uh, that my 16-year-old son was suicidal. I was like, where, what happened? How, how can I even miss this? Uh, and because of it, it was so heavy on my heart. I, I just could not grasp or, or even think, how can I even miss that my son was feeling so down? Um, that sadly he tried, then we later on, we learned that he had tried to commit suicide three times. Um, and through the three times we truly believe without any doubt in our minds that there was divine intervention. We know that God protected our son through these three attempts to commit suicide. He was feeling so, so, so down that he no longer wanted to live. What, I mean, that broke our heart. A 16-year-old son, 16-year-old boy, how, how down can he feel that he no longer wanted to live? And then one Sunday evening, I received a call from the hospital. And I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It, I just could not believe it. So on the other end, they tell me, Mrs. Nova, your son was found unconscious. A random person called 911. Um... When found, he was not breathing, and he flatlined three times on the way to the hospital. When when I was hearing this, I just lost it. I lost it. Um, I started crying. My husband was like, "What what's going on? What happened?" And I, um, you know, I told him, and of course, we the first thing we did is we rushed to the hospital. Once we get there. The doctor tells me, Mrs. Nova, it is a miracle that he's still with us. The amount of fentanyl that was in his system was more than enough to kill him at an instant. And then she explained that it took um, three doses of Narcan to bring him back up. I couldn't hear. I could not believe I was hearing this. You know, I was hearing... Um, you know, the news, always you hear some tragic um, story, but I never thought this would happen to me. I never thought it would happen to my family. And I desperately wish that this was all just simply a bad nightmare and that I would wake up and everything would be okay. The doctor um, who took care of my son literally broke down into tears and she was just crying. And she just kept saying there was no other explanation. She just kept saying there's no other explanation other than that it is a miracle that your son 
is alive. And she was crying hysterical. Um, as for my family and I, there was no doubt that God protected our son. There was no doubt in our mind. You know, prayer is so powerful. If you ever feel that God doesn't listen to you, I want to share with you and I want to tell you God listens. God listens. Even the prayers of parents, of a desperate mother going through something so bad. Because when we're going through this, we feel so helpless. But God listens to our prayers. And the beautiful thing about it is that we can't, you know, as parents, we cannot be with our kids, our children 24-7. But the beautiful thing about it is that God protects our children and he hears our prayers. He, he is able to be with our kids 24-7. Um, so I don't want you to give up and say that God does not hear or that the prayers have no power whatsoever. And I am here to tell you that I have seen it. God does hear our prayers. He was hospitalized for a couple of weeks, and the experience uh, was very traumatic for our son. The things that he that he went through, and as he was hospitalized, it was very devastating for him. And for us as parents, it was so hard to to watch him suffer. Um, and we couldn't help feeling so helpless we we wanted to find the right words we wanted to desperately get him out of there but he needed to be there they needed to watch him for you know since he was suicidal before they needed to watch him and um he was given medications and and treatments uh but ever since you know it has been a learning process for us as parents and for his sisters. It was very, very hard. Um, it was important for us to learn how to cope um, and understand what our son was going um, going through, what he was feeling uh, emotionally, mentally, physically, and. You know, today he continues to see his doctors um, and his therapist. Um, <clears throat> we are so thankful that he's doing better, that he's doing better. The truth is, you know, it is difficult to comprehend this type of experience to the fullest extent unless you've lived it. And sadly, many families are facing similar situations today, every day. Um, this is why I decided to share my story with you. And this story is so delicate. My son is 17 now, but even to my son, I, before I even posted this, before I even put it out there as my blog or putting it out there, I, I, um, I had my son read it and I told him, I feel like there are many families who our story will help them. Um, and I would like to share part of your story and I and I told him to read it and I said I would like you to read it but I would respect your wishes if you tell me not to post and he read it and it made me feel so good because after he read it he told me mom it is really good you can you can use it as your blog you can post it and you can share it 
And that made me feel so, so good because I know that our story is going to help many others out there. So I end this. This is part one. And soon I will be sharing part two. I hope that this is a blessing. Please feel uh, free to share your comments. Remember, prayer is powerful and you are not alone. God bless you and see you in part two. Hi, thank you for viewing my channel. Please help my channel to grow and remember to subscribe and I would love to read your comments.